All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash. This is Hero of Aetheric, and this is a melee class line leveling guide from level one to level 100. So getting up to tier five. Now you can start as warrior or thief, and I'll explain the differences uh, as we go here. But basically starting off, you want to go into the first town, Loton, speak to Squire Sampson, get your main story quest up and running. First quest will be to kill five rats and also visit the Loton Town Hall. Accept all of the story quests here and we'll try and knock a few of these out. You can get uh, some nice rewards, some orns, experience and stuff, uh, items as well. So uh, don't worry too much about them for now. So immediately what we're going to do is we're going to okay also speak to, to Carl, accept his quest. Get Carl's ring early on is good. But immediately what you're going to want to do, uh, move just northeast and into this next area. Also, you're going to want to put a torch on. That causes more mod, uh, monsters to spawn. And you see the when you have the yellow exclamation mark above mobs, uh, they are quest mobs, so you can kill those. This is a little daily quest to kill bats. And as uh, I started about warrior... Now, the only difference really between Warrior and Thief, I'll explain right now, is the first two classes that we're going to play are are different. Once you get to Tier 3, which is level 50, we're going to join forces and we're gonna, both going to go Battle Master. So really, the only difference is uh, the weapons we can use to start off uh, either as Warrior or Thief. And what I'm going to do is hopefully we'll find a couple of weapons from each uh, that I can show you. But kill a few goblins and uh, try and get a better weapon is, is the main thing to do. So as warrior, what I'm going to want to do is try and find a fallen warrior. So, okay, leveled up. Just got a bow there, but I can't wear a bow because I'm not a thief. Uh, and if you are a thief class, you want to try and find a fallen thief. Now the thing is, fallen thieves can only spawn at nighttime. And nighttime happens between... Uh, 20 past the hour and quarter to the hour. So, you know, pretty much once an hour. So we've got got a nice few mobs here. Unfortunately, there is no... Okay, there's a fallen warrior up there. So I'm going to I'm gonna hot foot it straight over there. Try and kill that. Also, any clickables you see, click them. Uh, we've just got some goblin armor. I don't think it's actually an upgrade, but uh, you can't even wear it. Okay. So this is a fallen warrior. We're going to try and get his sword drop. Let's kill this guy. Use a health potion if you have to. Uh, didn't get him, unfortunately, but we got some boots. I think we can wear those. Put on these hard leather boots. Now there's a Fallen Thief just spawned, so yeah, if you are starting Thief class, you want to kill this guy and uh, try and get the Fallen Thief's dagger. A bit unfortunate there. So there's a Fallen Warrior here. The These tier 2 bosses are going to be too strong for you just now. Here we go. And boom, Fallen Warrior's sword. So go in your inventory, equipment, Click on this rusty sword and boom, got uh, an extra 45 attack there. The Fallen Warrior also dropped some iron armor, uh, an iron helmet possibly. So now you can actually see the difference. We can one shot some of these tier one mobs now. Uh, so again, if you were a thief, try and focus on the Fallen Thieves. The goblins also drop like a bow and they can they have the potential to be slightly better than what you're already wearing. And we're just going to focus on yeah, one-shotting these little mobs especially for the first story quest. And if we check the map early on, you have this whole area of map available to us. Uh, I kind of recommend just staying in this first section because there's less mobs that can spawn. And there's more chance of those mobs really being your fallen warrior or fallen thief. But, you know, feel free to actually travel around the map and uh, 
trying to find the other mobs. Other thing to stay close by is we're going to kind of rush through or, you know, finish the rat quest as soon as possible. And you have to go back to Loten uh, to collect the next quest. There's also some bandits around for Carl. The Carl quest, if you are a thief and you are unlucky with finding a fallen thief, killing loads of bandits for Carl is a good shout because you can get a Carl's dagger. Uh, for his second quest. But yeah, just to basically kill everything you see with the yellow exclamation mark. So we need to go back to Lota now, speak to Samson. And as you're walking down, you can click other places on the map. You can you can start fights on the map. And you want to complete quests because you get rewarded in not just for Orns, but you also work towards the quest achievement and they give you very high orns compared to your level and don't be afraid to hit other fallen warriors because you can get higher quality weapon allowing you to do even more damage early on and if you get a second weapon uh, there we go we just got an iron helmet so we can equip that getting a bit of extra defense Let's enter Loten, and we uh, have been asked to go to our origin town which is just back where we started, killing some mobs along the way. Click on this guy, go Fanon. Build a shop, which is free. And you want to check your shop. See if there's anything here you can wear. Sometimes you find whetstones and you can even find uh, better weapons than what you have right now. But there's nothing really here for us just now. So we have to go back to Loten. I actually leveled up from that quest. And the quest also gives us gold, which is a good point. We want to reach 20,000 gold to have enough to buy our first pet. But we're now back to Loten. Speak to Samson again. And we get the goblins, too many goblins quests. So we've got to defeat five goblins, five mages. And you see we get a whetstone, which will allow us to level up our weapon to level two for free. And we're definitely going to want to do that. So head just back around the corner uh, in this northeasterly direction and basically kill five goblin mages and five normal goblins. If you did manage to find a fallen warrior sword, you should be able to kill bandit lords in a few hits, especially if you have some armor as well. You see, they don't do that much damage to us and we should get a little level up from here, at least one. Oh, we've got an ornate bandits cloak as well. Uh, we've got at least three levels. So once you reach level 10, Join any faction that you like. Well, we actually got eight levels from that. So we got to level 15 straight away. Uh, pretty awesome. Get some bandits for Carl. Carl's good because we actually get a, a ring, which gives us a little bit of extra attack as well. So that's why you want to kill bandits. So I'm going to hunt around for these goblins. Here we go, Goblin Mages. Uh, the Draconian Lord is probably a bit too powerful for us right now. But you can always try. Loads of Goblins around. While I'm searching for my last Goblin, if you haven't found a Fallen Warrior Sword yet, these guys, Barbarians, they drop an axe, which is which has 25 attack. Okay, this one didn't, but I just killed one and I got a, an axe which has 25 attack, and that's definitely a massive upgrade from the Rusty Sword. So anything that gives you more attack as a weapon, definitely want to equip that before working up to a Fallen Warrior Sword, which is the, the main goal. There you go, there was an axe there. And this is our last goblin kill. Oops. Here we go. Back to Loten. Complete this quest. Get our whetstone. And what we're going to do is use this whetstone on our fallen warrior's sword. Now, if you haven't found a fallen warrior's sword yet, I would recommend you wait until you get one uh, before using your whetstone. But this levels it up and it gives us an extra 10 attack, which is going to be super nice for quite a while. Go back, speak to Samson. 
get the next quest. We now have to find a goblin lord. And yeah, the best way i found is they usually quite often spawn just in this section here. If you, if you find a goblin lord, you will need to kill the other boss uh, to get the goblin lord to spawn. Uh, compared to bandit lord, goblin lord is much harder, much more health and does magic attacks. So we don't typically have a lot of resistance. But just going to still use the attack button and uh, make sure you use health potions if you need to so you don't die because the bosses uh, respawn with, well, if you don't kill them and they kill you, they you have to kill them from full health. Again, unlike in Orna. And there we go. If I've managed to finish that. So, Goblin Lord completed. We also got a lucky silver coin. Managed to get Quest Seeker 2 as well, which gives us 5,000 orns. That's a nice achievement. So that's why you always kind of want to do quests. Back to Loton, back to speaking to Squire Samson. And now we have to reach level 25, which is tier 2. So from here, I would say kill some Minotaurs. Just kill whatever bosses you find. It, only a couple of extra boss kills will get us there. If you haven't found your Fallen Warrior Sword yet, I would definitely focus on that first as well, though. If you Minotaur Axe is also a, a pretty solid weapon, and there's level 25. Uh, it doesn't unlock anything extra. We already start the game with tier 1 and tier 2 zones, but what we will now find is that tier 2 enemies will spawn for us. So you see the Minotaur Axe starts with 44 attack compared to the Fallen Warrior Sword 50 attack. But as long as you have like some basic armor, you will be able to chip away at the Minotaur. So you can get the Minotaur Axe before Fallen Warrior Sword, and that's a perfectly adequate weapon to use your Whetstone on. And just killed another Bandit Lord and reached level 25, which means we have reached tier 2. And that gives us an extra heap of Orns and Gold, which we can means we can now buy our first pet. And we also need to go uh, to Svarga to meet Asmund for our next line of quests. So yeah, if you're playing on blue stacks, you can just click to directly to the east of Lotan. If you're on mobile, you have to walk all the way down here and we can still kill Minotaurs and bosses and stuff along the way. Now, what you want to do as well, once you've picked up at least a second Minotaur Axe or a second Fallen Warrior Sword is we can actually go to dual wielding once we reach tier two. And I'll show you here, we get more attack when we dual wield, roughly similar weapons. So we've got 100 attack just now. Click on your offhand and then on the right, click dual wielding and click Minotaur Axe or click your next uh, highest weapon. And then you can go back, check our stats now and attack has gone up to 108. So we get a nice little bonus attack there. So we're in Svarga, click on Asmund, start the story, uh, start the next story quest. We have to kill some Draconians, and that's going to give us a fine whetstone, which we will allow us to level our a weapon from uh, level two to level three. So in here, you can check the store. Uh, check the store if there's anything nice for you. Uh, we could buy Draconian armor, but we'll probably get one of them straight away. You can also buy weapons. Again, if something gives you more attack than what you're currently wearing, you recommend to buy it. But what, what, what we want to do is check the shop and really I recommend starting off with the dog uh, 20,000 gold because it has a healing spell and does a damage for us so got the dog now and now what we want to do is uh, walk up to yeah basically the same section we were farming again you can you can walk over there uh, actually before I forget is just south of Loton is the Forest Gate Waygate. And that's going to allow us to port back here every three minutes. So make sure you walk next to it to unlock it. So there we go. We've unlocked the Loton Forest Gate. We can continue on our journey northwards to kill Draconians. And that allows us to, you can click on the map, click on the Waygate, and you can port back here quite easily. So now you can actually go and miles away over here and then port back to Loton quite easily. So we may as well do that. 
we can also accept Beatrice's quest here. Uh, we're going to get five souls. We're going to have to go to the arena to kill other players to get souls. And I'll show you. The first arena we can join is this one here, Fallen Champions Clearing. And there's a way gate next to it as well, which will allow us to port there quicker in the future. And as we're going around trying to find Draconians, we can now unlock our tier two class, which we're going to want to unlock Paladin. Now, Paladin gives us some elemental skills. Fire Strike, Ice Strike, Earth Strike, Lightning Strike. And what you want to do is go in your skills and whatever faction you chose, when you reach level 10, go to that faction and, and put on the elemental strike. In slot three, I'm also gonna have uh, Warcry. I thought we unlocked Warcry. Yeah, Warcry is under buffs. There we go. Put Warcry as well. We can use that for longer fights. Uh, we've got some gulls as a daily quest, as, as a town hall quest. So again, always good to kill. And we've spotted our first draconian up here. Oh, we've got some nine orns from the clickable item. That's always good. So we've got to kill five of these draconian warriors. And the dog's helping extra damage as paladin. And yeah, the draconians will give us some upgrades to our armor. So just stick that on, see green numbers. What Once you equip the elemental skills as well, we can actually kill these living armors, the blue knights. And you can see any elemental skill does uh, blue damage. Oop, I meant to use mana potion there. And blue damage means we are doing 50% extra damage than normal. And red damage means you're doing 50% less damage or half. So this is why when the elemental strikes and we almost just got like two brand new armors. So superior rune armor and ah, okay, rune leggings we got. So again, still an upgrade. So you can get a full set. You get the armor chest as well, which is a nice upgrade. So there's another draconian warrior over here. Kill the Draconian, unlock the Champion's Gateway Gate so we can come back to the arena later on and continue, continue around trying to find Draconians. I'm just going to kill this spider boss as well. Tier 2 boss. This is probably the easiest Tier 2 boss to kill. And this will give us a bunch of levels as well. You can see with some armor, with some basic armor, we're hardly taking any damage, even from these bosses. And notice the bosses tend to drop arena tokens, which you're gonna to want to use later on. Yeah, some nice level ups there. And there's a draconian mage down there as well, so go kill that. And I've also come down to unlock the Fen Hallsway gate, which is just down here. There is a Goblin Fortress dungeon the west side of the Fen Halls. Um, this place is also pretty good for uh, some kind of farming in general, usually quite a few mobs in here. Now let's test ourselves against these, both of these bosses. Draconian Lord should be the easiest of the two. And we will actually have to kill Draconian Lord after killing the Draconian's quest. But as long as you can cycle through the tier two bosses, we should be able to get one to spawn fairly easily. And you can see we're going to take this down very nicely with our good damage, if he stops healing at least. Now Draconian Lords drop monster tombs and also Draconian Mages drop them, but they are a much rarer drop from the monsters rather than the boss. See the boss drops the tomb most of the time. So you're going to go into equipment, accessory slots, and equip monster tomb. We see we get a 5% experience bonus there. If the tombs are higher quality, that bonus will also be higher. Now, you see the Demon Prince has 1600 health, so it's a much harder boss. This is when we want to use Warcry. And 
you can see we're taking a, a way more damage than the other bosses until now. So just keep an eye on your health. We still just use attack button. Overall, we we are doing more damage per turn, but we are most likely going to have to heal at some point as well. So just watch your health, and we should be able to manage this fairly well. And there we go. I had to use about five mana potions, but we managed to take it down. We this guy drops the axe of night. Which is actually not very strong, unfortunately. But you might get a, a quality one. Again, we just want to wear whatever is giving us the highest amount of attack. Now I'm going to show you a nice little trick to get different monsters spawned here. You're going to need... Uh, another character or a friend you should really make a character another character yourself and all you really have to do is invite them to a party and what that does is it basically creates a new world with new monsters in it and we're going to just wait a few seconds for the server to tick and these are all going to change and there you go swapped out the monster spawns unfortunately still no draconians though I'm not sure if the Draconians can actually spawn in the Fen Halls. Maybe, maybe not. So I'm going to go back up here. See if there's any Draconians. There's a mage. Let's see if he drops a tomb. He did not. Another mage up there. So I'm not 100% sure. It seems like maybe the Draconians don't actually spawn in the Fen Halls there. That could be the case. And because of that, I'm going to walk back to Vinland, auto travel, and kill any Draconians I see on the way. There's uh, one down here. There is actually a Draconian down there, so cancel that, auto travel, kill both of these Draconian warriors. And this is our final Draconian mage we need to kill. Skeleton for the daily quest as well, while we're on it. So, boom, we get our fine whetstone, and we need to go back to Svarga uh, for the next quest. So, you can take the way gate down uh, Lothan Forest Gate and walk to Svarga. And you have a choice here. You can either use your fallen, your fine whetstone, or you can save it for later. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm going to use it on the Fallen Warrior's Sword again, get that to roughly. 65 attack, which is uh, really great uh, for stomping through this first few levels. And now Asmund has asked us to enter the arena, kill five opponents, which is interesting. Now I'll check the best three here, and there's the tier two wolf, which I would kind of like as a little upgrade from the dog. I uh, need 50,000 gold though, and you see I've only got 31,000 gold, so what I can do is uh, release my current pet and you get half the cost back. So we get 10K back there. And then you need to go to the store and sell a bunch of stuff. So all the mage stuff that you picked up, you're not gonna use. Definitely sell that. Don't don't sell my short axe. Um, any armor, Draconian stuff is sells quite good. Uh, Axe of Night as well. The boss, these are the boss weapons. They sell for like 1k there. And that's enough. And we're going to go pick up the wolf now. It has a better heal and slightly uh, more damage. So, what I recommend now is actually waiting until we reach level 50 before entering the arena. And the reason for that is once we reach level 50, we're going to be able to find arrows in the arena. So we can knock out the story quest while also farming for our really nice arrows, which give us a really awesome ability called volley. So to get to level 50, same as before, uh, we can, you, can't actually, you can't actually walk anywhere just now, uh, which is a bit annoying, but we can walk up 
towards Vinland. And honestly, by the time we get over there to the arena, just by killing a few bosses along the way, killing any other quest mobs, we should be level 50. Remember that the bosses tend to all drop the arena tokens as well, which uh, we need to spend each time we fight in the arena, so it's well worth killing uh, a few of these tier 1 bosses, which should be easy by now. Uh, pick up some more arena tokens, make sure we have enough to get 5 kills. So I've just reached level 50, killed a couple of arachne bosses, killed uh, some demon princes, and we're almost at the arena. I'll take out this arachne along the way as well. And you notice once you reach level 50, you unlock a couple of new skills. Uh, you can put on Omni Strike or Osmo Strike, but they are pretty high mana and probably not going to use them that much. Uh, so definitely not not super important to to put them on at level 51. And the so yeah, level 50 is tier three. So we have now unlocked the Lithran woods area which is tier 3 but we're going to enter the arena uh, show you what I'm wearing rune helmet, rune leggings, monster tomb uh, accessories uh, if, you if you finish Carl's quest to get the Carl's ring stick it on or if you find amulets in shops they can give you extra attacks stick them on otherwise going with this leather jacket try and get a full set of rune gear for just a little bit of extra defenses, uh, but let's see what we can do. Got 25 arena tokens, and okay, Knight is probably the worst one to face because they have a bit higher defense, but basically what you want to gonna do, hit War Cry and then just attack. And um, if you die, it doesn't matter. There, there is gonna be, you will definitely come across people that you can, that you will be able to kill. You can see the knight is a bit annoying. Uh, higher defense, also has the defensive buff. So this is probably going to be a loss, but it doesn't matter. We've got 25 other chances. And we can just uh, rematch straight away. So yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to lose. So rematch, forget about that. Warcry again. Attack. The mage doesn't have super high defense. So like taken down and boom, we got some arrows straight away. So exit here. Equipment, offhand ice arrows. Doesn't matter if you get ice arrows, poison arrows, earth arrows, just any kind of arrows. Even better if you get a bit of quality just to higher the attack, but it's not such a big deal. Now, you remember we also have a quest to get five souls for Beatrice. And what we can do is put on auto dismantle by quality with standard poor and broken. And we can win another few fights and we should get souls very easy. So now with the arrows, we have this volley offhand skill. And what it does is it's a multi hit attack, but it also activates our ward, which is the purple bar beneath our health and mana. And ward acts like a kind of energy shield, it's like extra health. And we start off with 25% damage absorption, goes to ward first before health. And, you know, later in the game, you can find skills which increases the amount of ward absorption. Um, but for now, it's just acting like an extra buffer while giving us a nice damaging attack. And it's a really nice mix. And it's also free uh, in terms of mana. It doesn't cost any mana. So this is nice to farm because uh, not only at this level... Yeah, we're getting items for quests, but the arena rewards at this level are also actually very nice in terms of orns and gold, gold especially, gold especially, and experience. But with the with the gold that we can find from the arena now, just by winning a few fights, uh, we'll be able to buy a tier three pet uh, and pretty much anything we want in the if we find anything nice in shops as well, such as whetstones. Boom, boom, boom. I think we just need one more soul. Uh, yeah, don't forget Warcry as well. Warcry is very useful. Gives us 25% extra damage on attacking skills. 
and we're going to take down this Urgal, and we got a fifth soul there. So I didn't mean to rematch, but it's a mage, dirty little mage, so we can take him down pretty fast. Lord the One, thank you for your impending sacrifice. And of course, you can still get lucky in the arena with some uh, quality gear as well. I probably shouldn't have put on auto dismantle, but it's uh, it makes it makes it easier. So, a few fights were already level fifty seven, and now we need to go complete this one and go back to Svarga. And Asmund has asked us to build a bestry in our own origin town, which we are going to do that. Also, we have to buy a follower, which is we already have. So, tier three. A couple of options. We have the the gnome, which I quite like, or the ghost, which puts people to sleep. And just check, yeah. So with a few few kills in the arena, we should have yeah a couple hundred thousand. So I'm gonna pick up the gnome. You can also release your original pet. Okay, I, I actually have to release the follower. So good boy, off he goes. Pick up the gnome, which will give us uh, some nice extra damage output. Uh, but we still have to build a bestry back in our origin town. Now, the problem with building a bestry is it costs 100,000 gold. You need 10 stone and 25 height, which early on in the game is a very good chance that we don't have these materials. Uh, we've got 6 height and uh, 6 stone. So... Really what we need to do is uh, find hide and stone and basically for this I do recommend having auto dismantle by quality on at least you know broken per and standard and we need to find some hide now actually crows uh, drop hide and uh, crows feathers which can be dismantled into hide hopefully we'll get one that actually shows us that in just a second there we go so we get some hide from crows what other gear uh, dismantles into hide you can check by clicking on the item and seeing what materials it has so simple robe goblin stuff goes into leather uh, leather jacket is actually leather yeah crows feather is hide so uh, what about bandits cloaks? Okay, bandits cloaks and stuff is hide as well. So again, killing bandits. And what we'll do now is actually yeah, just dismantle all of this stuff. We don't need any more. So killing bandits, animals um, for hide. And then for stone, we get another achievement award there. For stone, oh, we got lucky here. There's a clickable stone there, which will oh, gives us five stone already, boom. Uh, but there are mobs that drop it as we can finish Beatrice's quest here. We get an experience potion and another quest to kill five evil eyes. And basically the experience potion and the, the silver coins, um, you can see the coins we are actually going to acquire a lot of by killing bosses. And now that we're tier three, the bosses will also start dropping the silver coin. Uh, which gives us double orns as well. So I'd recommend sticking those on. Uh, we get another achievement award, Quest Seeker, for 10,000 orns. Our next class is going to be 50,000 orns. We don't have quite enough for that yet, but I will show you something uh, on that soon. But for now, we need to focus on trying to find stone and hide. So kill, click all the clickables that you can find. But also, earthworms, when it's raining will drop stone, can drop stone, not all the time. And rubbish which spawns in the sea or in water can also drop stone. And these can also be give you random materials such as stone. And you can also find stone in shops. So you can check the general stores in Lotin, Svarga and uh, Vinland as well. I'm just showing you how much damage our gnome is doing. It's doing between 100 and 150 odd damage pretty much every turn. Um, so that's really nice extra damage output. We can go visit 
north of the Lithran Woods. Uh, but there will be some pretty strong enemies, especially the bosses in here. But we may as well try and kill uh, bosses here. Let's kill this living armor to get some... Try and get the chest piece. Oh, I had auto dismantle on, never mind. Okay, so we're trying to kill... Oh, by the way, these ogres can drop stone as well. But remember, these tier 3 mobs, they are going to be doing more damage to us. Please drop stone. Boom, we got stone. Very nice. So you got a few different types of mobs that can farm that we can farm for stone as well as the clickables on the ground. It's probably the easiest way to get 10 stone. Uh, okay, so uh, the Lord of Wolves actually just drops his staff. So uh, we we'll come on to Lord of the Wolves, but we we let's see if we can take down this lost pharaoh. Put auto dismantle off because it drops a nice weapon. Let's just see what kind of damage we're doing. Doing about 200 per turn. Our gnome is doing great damage. Can be a pretty difficult boss. We get cursed, which does I think 5-10% damage uh, dot per turn. And we're going to be hitting hard, but worth using uh, health potions here because okay, we got a broken one, but which is a bit annoying, but nice level. We get this. Hopefully you don't get a broken uh, one, but the broken ank, if you get a normal one, it actually does, actually has like 70 odd attack and magic. So it's a very nice weapon to try and get. Lord of Wolves, we can take down as well. For some nice experience, rewards, and gold. Drops a great sword and uh, staff of wolves. Now, let's check that great sword. It might actually be decent. Okay, 45 attack. So you can see even this tier, well, tier 2 weapon dropped from a tier 3 boss, it's not as good as the Fallen Warrior's sword. Uh, okay, there's another Lost Pharaoh there. I'm going to try and kill this one. And we get Ancient Stone and an Ankh this time. So this Ankh should actually be... Give us more damage, if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. So put the Ankh on our main main hand, giving us a bit more damage. So this is, this is the point where you would want to use a Whetstone if you saved it. But to get us to this point, I like using the Whetstones early anyway. Uh, but that's fine. We're always wanting to upgrade our weapon and our damage. So that's fine. Now I need to get hide to be able to build a bestry. Still need seven hide. And don't forget to put torches on to spawn more monsters. You can buy them for really cheap in shops. And the other point I should have mentioned as well is, yeah, we can buy health potions, small health potions and mana potions for just 100 gold. It's always good to have a stock. Uh, a little stock when you're going out. Okay, I've just been killing some more bandits for getting hide, and look what we've got here. We've got a mimic which has spawned. So what we're going to want to do, make sure auto dismantle is off because this thing can draw a bunch of cool stuff. Let's see if we get anything nice. Staff, steel leggings, short swords. Ugh. Okay, this thing drops a, a mimic head which actually gives uh, a little bit of bonuses early on. Which is which would be something nice, but yeah, unfortunately didn't get anything uh, too juicy there, which is a shame. Oh, we got a 25% gold bonus from Thieves Ring. So I have all the, the hide I need now. I picked up uh, this quest in Vinland at the inn there, Rose's Rest, to kill a few fallen mages, which I've now completed, so I'll make sure to do that on the way back up there. Now we're going to go complete Carl's quest on the way and Carl's quest, first you have to kill 10 bandits, but then you also need to give him 10 iron. So easy way to get iron is dismantle all of these iron looking weapons, hammers, you know, basically dismantle pretty much everything 
all the weapons you're not using. Uh, Minotaur Axe, great staff. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just never going to use these. And all those daggers. How much iron we got? Yeah, 18 iron. Uh, that's great. So Carl is right here. Oh, it's actually... Okay, we get the Carl's ring from the first quest. And then he needs 5 iron for the second quest. And we're not going to use Carl's daggers. It's a tier 1 weapon. Uh, but at least we can use the ring... Which, because it has a nice, uh, some small stats, five extra attack, uh, which will help us kill things faster. Always killing stuff while moving, so Minotaur bosses. And with the help of our gnome, basically doubling our, our damage output. Yeah, we're in a tier three hits there and goes down. So, Origin Town, build a bestry. Uh, was that a blacksmith I clicked on? Yeah. Uh, I don't have enough gold, bloody hell. I'll be back here when I get enough gold. No, no, I'm just kidding, I had I had enough gold. So, I'm really happy with the gnome, to be honest. It it does cost a fair bit of gold to upgrade it, so don't need to do anything on that just now. Complete this quest. Small vessel potion increases pet action rate for one hour. It's not worth using at the moment at all. So definitely save that for later. I'm going to go into Lowton Town Hall and hand in some of these random quests I've been doing. Hand this one in, kill 18 goblins. Uh, a lot of travel quests you kind of complete automatically just by walking around. Silk by killing Arachne. There's another traveling quest there. So boom, that's like another four quests done, which is awesome. Uh, leave there, go back to Svarga. One shot this bandit lord on the way. Boom, boom, boom. And what we're going to do now, you can see we are level 64, so we're actually very close to the next tier. Uh, but we've only got 36,000 orns, so we don't even have enough orns for our current tier class. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of a couple of achievements. Uh, they are called the Student and Polymath, which you can see we get more orns for unlocking more classes and for learning skills. So the really good way to do that, and which actually comes with a positive outcome of orns, is we're going to go back, we're going to unlock the tier 1 mage, and which learns us a bunch of skills, the tier 1 thief, with the same result, bunch of skills learned there. We're going to skip the knight, Ignore the tier 2 knight, but we are going to unlock the tier 2 archmage where we learn a bunch of new magic skills we're never going to use. And the tier 2 rogue, even though it's 10,000 orns, it's fine. A bunch of skills learned by the rogue and a couple of really nice ones. Now, so we get master researcher, we'll come on to that later, but there's the student 3, so we get 10,000 orns there. And it will take just a, it will take a moment for the game to catch up. Uh, for our achievements to pop in. Okay, I'll uh, talk to Asmund while we're waiting. So the next quest is uh, on the storyline is to complete codex entries, which you should almost always have done by default by getting to this point without even noticing. So. You can check out my guide for, for codexing if you want to learn more, but that should be easy. And okay, now we've got the achievements rolling in. So this is the polymath, 5,000 orns for getting more classes. And here's a good one. Student for 25,000 orns. That leaves us with an extra X amount of orns. 50,000 orns at least is what we need to buy our tier 3 class, which is going to be, in this case, Battlemaster. Now... You can go Centurion. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you get a very defensive set of skills. And you get Ward up first turn. But with Battlemaster, uh, you get this skill called Double Edge, which is a really nice skill. And you can actually wear any gear. So I I always prefer Battlemaster. Yes, it's probably it's technically more thiefy than Centurion, uh, but it's still a melee class. 
And at tier four, we're going to have the same anyway. Now, where are we at? Dr. Asmund again. And now we get a gauntlet key. So now we're asked to do a gauntlet. And our first gauntlet available is the mushroom. Check if there's anything in the shop here. Uh, Nightshade, you might as well you might as well buy that. Uh, nine elixirs. Yeah, these are going to be useful. Uh, I'm going to buy like ten large health potions as well, and buy like a hundred small ones. There we go. So the first dungeon available to us is the Mushroom of Perilous Visitation. And we may as well give it a shot. We may as well give it a shot. As we're Battle Master, we can now wear Mage Gear and Thief Gear. So best check if you have anything in your inventory that you can use, which is slightly better stats than what you're wearing. Normally a full set of uh, Rune Gear is actually is pretty solid anyway. We're at the dungeon. I'll show you my new skill loadout. I've added Osmo Strike uh, to steal some health sometimes and uh, Stun Dart, uh, which may come in useful at other times. But let's go in here. Uh, we'll just do straight away a normal dungeon. And we want to use War Cry because any buffs last across all floors in dungeons. And now from here, you can see there's 10 floors at our current tier. As you go into higher tiers, there will be more floors available. And dungeons have a different set of enemies available, including a lot of enemies that you can find normally out in the world. So we're just going to be careful. And we are tier three. So tier three dungeons, we have nine floors of normal monsters. And now we're into the tier three monsters. And then the final floor is going to be a boss. And um, it can be, I think, any tier boss minus your tier, uh, your tier minus two. So it could, we couldn't get tier one to tier three bosses in this. We've got a great mimic. Uh, this is this could be could be a problem. In great mix is that berserk? I think it's a berserk as well. I'm not doing a lot of damage to it. So just be careful with mimics. A lot of the times they are immune to certain types of damage. But we managed to get through it. Mm, nothing really interesting there. Can drop some nice things. The great mimic head, by the way, don't be fooled because it actually drops your experience gain by like 99%. So you definitely don't want to wear it. But there we go. There's our first dungeon. We get a second Carl's ring straight away. That's pretty... Pretty lucky. Basically, any quest item that you complete can be once you complete the quest, it, it then goes into a, a loot pool that can drop from completing dungeons. And you saw we got some uh, 900 orns, orns there, so yeah, completing dungeons is going to be a big part of the Orna and Hero of Aetheric experience. And for the for the main quest, we're going to have to go back to speak to Asmin. I just want to take down a couple of these bosses here. Get some more levels in. Uh, maybe we get a nice monster tomb. And I, I realize I probably shouldn't have done that because I think killing a Draconian Lord is actually the next step in the story quest line, but never mind. And yes, we have to now kill a Draconian Lord. So not to worry, we can just kill more bosses in the, the tier two areas to spawn a Draconian Lord. So basically anything past this line in the Great Plains and uh, Fen Halls and stuff, we can find Draconian Lord. So I'm actually just going to warp gate all the way over to Fen Halls. See if there's not any Draconian Lords hanging out and there's one right there. Boom. So that's why you want to pick up way gates whenever you pass them. It allows you to hop across the map. There's only a three minute cooldown on them. Uh, very useful indeed. And I might actually go and go back to the arena for one more arena kill. Uh, Carl was asking for that. And that would be another quest in the bank as well. So there's a level 67. Complete this quest. Get the Draconian amulet. Talk to Asmund again. And um, okay. A couple of quests I can, I can do while I'm here. 
for Beatrice. Pick up some more stone. So there we are, guys. It's time to focus on becoming stronger. And we need to reach the next tier in terms of the story quest, which we already have done. Uh, reach level 50 and unlock uh, the tier 2 class, which we have absolutely smashed. You get 10,000 orbs for that, which is actually super nice, and an extra gauntlet key. And now you need to talk to Galar of Murkheim. Uh, but what we're going to do is stick some things in the blacksmith because the next quest is going to be yeah we need to upgrade things so save some uh, rubbish tier one stuff that takes leather or iron and stick five things i think it's going to be five it might be three but yeah leather try not to don't put things that require hide because we know we need to build some uh, more bestries later on, but draconian stuff. I think it's three. All the draconian stuff uses uh, draconite, which is a very, very easily farmable material. And we may as well stick in this uh, iron helmet as well. So that, I think it's five items in. Uh, and this is gonna. Okay, we went a little bit overboard. This is gonna preemptively start the the timer, one hour timer to complete them, which we're going to need for the next quest, which is uh, Galra Merkheim. He's a blacksmith, got his hammer there. I think we are also going to have to build a blacksmith in our origin town as well. Now, I know this is uh, a leveling guide, but as you can understand, I'm trying to keep us up with this, the main storyline as well, the main story quest line. And you absolutely do not have to do that, but I do recommend it because there are really nice items later on down the line uh, that we get from completing the main storyline in terms of quests. And, you know, it, it the, the story quest line, it does give you a nice entry into the game. It introduces things to you, gauntlets, bosses, you know, stuff in our origin town as well. So it's kind of like the tutorial that uh, the game is pushing you to do. Uh, so you may as well do it while you're lower level or at the same tier that the quests are asking you to, to be. Uh, so you can get rewarded for it uh, with, uh, you know, decent rewards relative to your current level. And if you're going to be killing stuff anyway to level up, you may as well do, do quests while we're at it as well. So we're just about to reach Vinland. And here's our man, Galar. Yes, he's a blacksmith, so we need to upgrade. Okay, it's three pieces of equipment and build one blacksmith. So we've already got some stuff in the uh, like cooking in Svarga blacksmith, and we get another gauntlet key out of this, which is actually quite nice. Now, Finland has uh, an inn, Rose's Rest. So always check that in for quests. Um, here, I, I picked this one up when I was tier one, kill four fallen mages. I've now completed that. And now that I've gone up tiers, there's a sec, here's a uh, tier two quest and a tier three quest. May as well pick them up. Um, as we know, quests are, are really nice for the achievements and progression. Check the store if there's any anything nice we can buy. Any kind of materials, daily, daily, daily if it's quite nice. Sorry, excuse me. Um, what you can do as well, if you've got a few arena wins and you've got, you know, two, 300k gold, you can start buying weapons and shitty armor for dismantling. And there's one other thing we can buy, which is really juicy, which is a tier three halberd. You see, this is actually eight more attack than the ank we got. Now, this won't be in any, this won't be in every shop, but the halberd is definitely an upgrade. Uh, so there we go. Decked out on the halberd. That's super nice. Uh, let's check the best three. What else have we got in here? So we have the hellhound dragger mage. Uh, also options. How do these compare to a gnome? I'm not actually sure. What spells do we have here? Flame 2, Spark 2. I'm kind of happy with the gnome. Uh, the Hellhound is, is quite nice though. Hellhound is quite nice because it cast Mute and Threaten. Uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna swap because oh, you need, I don't have any space in my best yet. The reason I'm swapping Follower now uh, with the Hellhound, cast Mute and Threaten, which 
uh, lowers the magic and attack of your enemy. And that's going to be good for taking down bosses. For sure. Now, I'm going to go back to my origin town and check what I need to build a blacksmith. Of course, if I was uh, smarter and read ahead what I needed to do, I could have uh, stopped off in the my origin town before walking all the way up to Vinland. And these are the requirements. 250,000 gold, 25 wood, and 25 stone. So we know killing bosses and doing some arena fights is really good for gold, so that should be fine. Wood as well is quite easy. Uh, we find a lot of wooden weapons, which we can dismantle into wood. Uh, but again, it's kind of stone, which is actually going to slow us down. Back to nine stone, we need to find 25 in total. So really, there's not much else we can do here. Uh, and to speed this up, let's restart the shop, see what we can find. Mithril, nothing there. Just make sure I have enough torches. Apart from really, the best way I think to find stone is actually going to be uh, traveling around the map and clicking on clickables. Now, if you remember earlier on, we disbanded party and remade a party uh, to reset mobs. Well, a current tip is that that process does also reset the clickable items in our area. So if you can, with that uh, knowledge, you may be able to quickly farm stone. But uh, yeah, look at this halberd. Oof. Oh, nice. Level 69. So what I'm going to do now, while we are, we're not stuck, but we're, you know, we have things to find. We got a lot of stone to find. And I'm going to go towards Lithrin, uh, which is the, the tier three town. See what else we can find in the tier three area and see how we fare against tier, other three, tier three bosses uh, and work towards tier four. Here's a clickable, we get Nightshade. Uh, what else? Uh, missed that one. I actually just found a superior monster tomb from a Draconian Lord. So you can see there, I got 10% extra experience on my other tomb. Quality does affect experience gains, Orn gains, gold gains, etc. that you can find on, on items. So always nice to get quality versions of those. Gonna see if I can take out this skeleton for my daily quest across these trees. And we can. And that is the fifth one for the daily quest, which is another quest completed. Check how many quests we've done here already. Uh, quest seeker, already done 23 quests. And you can see 25 quests, we get another 25,000 orns, which is gonna be uh, really nice for our tier four class where we need 100,000 orns. Uh, okay, you can't see until you're actually tier four, but yeah, we, we are quite a bit behind that. So that milestone of 25 quests is gonna be uh, really nice for unlocking, helping unlock our tier four class. Now, as we are walking through Lithran Woods, these two bosses here, the, these are demon knights, and these are the first bosses we can encounter that have the potential to drop gauntlet keys. And that is definitely something we're going to uh, want to try. They also drop a really nice weapon, uh, which has a slightly lower base attack than our halberd. However, it does get additional scaling uh, because it's a boss item compared to the halberd. Now, remember earlier, ogres, they can drop stone, remember? So kill every ogre you see. I'm just walking up to unlock the Lithrin Waygate as well before going into the town of Lithrin. It's currently not really much going on in Lithran actually. Uh, ooh, we do get this the stone drop nice. Lithran gate unlocked. Uh, I'm gonna go into the town first before fighting these guys because currently death, if you die, you respawn in the last town you visited. And yes, there's a way gate there, but if I die straight away, can be three minutes of waiting around. So I'm just gonna go to Lithran, kind of log it as my respawn point. Wow, it seems that every single tier 3 NPC is actually now in Lithran. So we've got uh, Elf Sala here. Quest there. We've got 
Uh, who's this? Gillis. Needs five monster tombs. Ah, oh, we're almost got those. Dudley wants us to kill Mithril Armors. And Dalan wants some elixirs. So, okay, four quests there to start. So you may as well go unlock these. Uh, oh, and look at this. Silver Amulet. So we're going to buy two of these. Uh, buy the wood here as well. And now uh, amulets, as I said earlier on, amulets are really nice because so you give us 20 attack and we can stack two of these. And I'm definitely going to wear them over the, the monster tomb because an extra 40 attack. What are we sitting on right now? 208 attack. So um, yeah, that's like more than a 20% damage increase right there, which is perfect timing for take, trying to take out these demon knights. Here we go. Going to want to cast War Cry. And this boss is definitely annoying early on because it has a lot of ward, ward regain, ward turns. And um, yeah, it can be just a difficult fight. But you can see here with 200 attack, we're actually making a pretty light work of this. And our Hellhand, Hellhound has dropped the magic. I know it's hard to see with this zoomed out, but uh, you will see that on your own fights. And we get a nice frozen prop from our arrows. So we get a poor demonic blade, which is not really what we wanted. And we want a, a nice quality version, but we have a second chance right next door. So we get the war up again um, with volley. Um, so yeah, we can actually, this is definitely a nice time to take these out. Uh, it won't drop keys all the time because we don't have a lot of luck bonus, which increases monster item drops. Dowsing rods and such like. But there we go. That is what we're after. High quality demonic blade. And this thing should be a nice upgrade. Another 19 attack. Uh, seems like that's... don't know why there's two there. Yeah, I think it's just a visual bug. But um, the halberd was with us for a couple of fights. But it doesn't matter. We've got a nice upgrade here. The thing to remember on this weapon is it's always, always going to have dark element on it. You see, it always has dark element. That's just innate to this particular weapon that drops from the boss. It can occasionally cause sleep. And the thing with the element now, uh, if you remember the living armors, for example, uh, for example, that lost pharaoh boss is actually immune to dark. So you just got to watch for that on some mobs. And that's why you always want to start carrying around at least a skill that has a different element on it. Dragon is going to be the best element in the game to have at least one extra skill off because if there's anything to immune to one element, it won't be immune to dragon in most cases. 99% of cases, but uh, we'll, we'll find dragon skills later on. Don't worry about that. So in the arena, now at this, at, at this point where we are kind of hunting for stone to carry on with our story quest. What I'm going to do now is we reach level 70 there. I'm going to farm in the arena and maybe some tier three bosses to reach level 75, which is tier four. And then I'm going to visit the next town of Athantia and we're going to pick up our first diluted mnemonic, which will allow us to start memory hunts. Now, memory hunts, you may have seen my other guides and stuff for, for memory hunts. Uh, which exists in Orna. And it's it's very much the same, same thing here in Aetheric, where we have a temple in Athantia, and we will also be able to build our own Oracle temple in our origin town later on. And we actually get two chances, once you get to that point, we get two chances per day of uh, getting a dilution mnemonic. But starting the memory hunt, it's exactly like Orna. There will be a random uh, location on the map that you can visit and you have to find the memories. What we can do is actually use Explorer Waystones to give us a compass marker on our map uh, to kind of start us off in, the, in the, the right direction. It's almost always best to use that for the first uh, memory hunt. There are, there are five hunts in total every time you use a Dilute Mnemonic uh, because there will be only be one uh, memory the first for the first hunt, which is always gonna we're always gonna have to find 
Uh, you can, if you don't have any Explorer's Waystones, we're going to have to just walk around the map. Uh, but it will be worth walking around because rewards are, are super great uh, for Orns. Like the Orns are, are so good return on investment in terms of time at this, at this part of the game. So yeah, so for this point, I need less than five levels. Going to do a bit of arena and do some boss killing as well. And uh, we'll see you when we're level 75. And there we go, just a few more arena fights. And we have reached uh, tier four. We have reached level 75. Also managed to pick up a nice little upgrade on our offhand. Got a famed heavy arrow, so I got four extra attack coming out of my uh, offhand there. So that's very nice. And while we're here, we're just going to pop across this bridge to the east of the Lithan Woods. And we're going to go visit Athantia. And as you can see here, I just want to demonstrate uh, with our dark weapon, it's immune to the Lost Pharaoh. So that's why you always have at least one other elemental skill. Uh, because a lot of the skills that you see, um, they use the weapon element on it. So if your weapon doesn't have an element on it, it will be physical. And physical has to be determined as an actual element itself. Because there are monsters and stuff which are... Uh, resistant or immune or even weak to to physical so now we cross the great athantia bridge and enter a tier four area and that troll that troll there under the bridge is a nice tier four boss uh let's let's tag the town and then we, we we might try and just take it down see how much damage we can do to that uh it drops a very nice accessory uh the troll's charm which would be definitely an upgrade for us but we can visit Athantis straight away. And thankfully, Northern Forge added this little uh, bridge uh, here because otherwise, in the past, you had to go all the way down and up and down. But we can take this nice little shortcut across. And we can go direct to this temple. Uh, okay, let's check the best tree first. Cactus, no, we're not going to change. Mm, I don't know if there's any NPCs here we should be talking to right now, but I'm pretty sure we can just go directly to the temple and uh, try for a mnemonic. So here we go, attempt ritual, hopefully we get one. We get one, we get a dilution mnemonic. Uh, so yeah, we go straight here, get your dilute mnemonic, and we're actually going to do this straight away. Uh, let's try and take this troll fight. Warcry. Oofed. So we get, oh, what? Two crits straight away. That's a, that's really harsh, isn't it? Oh, we put him asleep though. Okay. We got the sleep proc. So let's recover some health while he's asleep. So your pet can actually damage the boss while it's asleep and uh, it will stay sleeping. Uh, but when we damage it, it will wake up. Definitely will come in useful in the, in the not too distant future. Now would be also a good time to use sleep dart in our loadout actually. I only have stun dart, um, but when they're stunned, they can actually still attack. When they're asleep, they cannot attack. But here we go. Managed to take out tier four boss. We get the troll's charm. Ended level. So let's stick on a troll's charm. Uh, there we go. So a troll's charm, really nice. 50 HP, some mana, uh, 20 attack and, and magic, but also has defense, resistance, and dexterity. So a nice heap of stats there. Eventually, we're going to want a second one for sure. Uh, let's also check tier three. Uh, tier 4 quests as well. Uh, okay, there's actually... This one is completed, already completed it, so thankfully it gets locked. Draconian Lord as well. So that's pretty nice. Okay, let me try and get a second Troll Charm first. Let's see if we get it. We got it! Easy. And now we're rocking double Troll Charms. Very nice. A very blue-themed... Uh, setup we're going for here. 
And we get Quest Seeker 4 unlocked as well. So now we're sitting on around 50, okay, 67,000 orange. We're still 33,000 orange short of our tier four class, which is gonna be the Adept. Now, let's see if how many orange we get from this uh, diluted mnemonic hunt. So yeah, what we're gonna do items, pop the diluted mnemonic. And at this point, if we have, if you have an explorer's waystone, definitely wanna use that. And this is gonna point a marker on our map of where the shattered memory is. So 190 meters in a southwesterly direction. I'm gonna, 190 meters. Uh, I don't know how far, if it's here or if it's here. Uh, where should we go? It could be right there, it could be here. I reckon it's, uh, I reckon it's around here somewhere. Let's see. If not, it's only three minutes. Um, cool down or we just walk. 106 meters, mm, that seems a bit too far. And we found it. It was uh, actually not too far away. So this is the first shattered memory. You get click on it and you do yeah, random mini game. They're fairly uh, easy to work out. But look at these rewards, what we're gonna get here. 8,000 orange, 200,000 gold, some XP and some, some materials. So here's another reason why Bluestacks is kind of uh, a bit nicer to use than, the, than mobile, but there we go. Now, once you complete the first shattered memory, uh, there should be multiple on the map. So luckily this one is very nearby. Another 8,000 orns, so good. And there's nothing that seems to be nearby, so we need to find another, another three. And basically, the final one we do will give us an amity, which will give us at least one bonus and one malice. And um, yeah, if you want to work, if you want to check out my other guides, other videos, we go into a lot of depth on amities. We've done a lot of research on them. Uh, pretty cool items to have in the game. Uh, just work out this mini game. We're gonna get a level, 14,000 orange. Absolutely awesome. And it is really the addition of being able to get your Amity, your first Amity for free uh, at tier four that uh, really speeds up progression because yeah, we're definitely gonna uh, get our tier four class now. Before, back in the day, it was very rare to have enough orns to buy your tier four class when you were ready. Uh, but you definitely want to do this diluted mnemonic quest uh, straight away and uh, get those orns for your tier four class. So I'm gonna walk around. I'm all out of Explorer's Waystones, uh, so I'm gonna have to walk around manually to find uh, the next Shattered Memories. They can really spawn anywhere uh, on the map that you've unlocked. So yeah, it could be a bit of walking around, but definitely worth doing so at the time. And here we go. I decided to port over to the Fen Halls because I was lucky previously and my character is somehow flying up there. I think there's, my internet's a bit dodgy right now, but you can see there's three shit, three memories here. So yeah, Fen Hall seems to be a good place because it's completely wide open. Uh, very nice place for memories. So number three, another level, another 12,000 orns. And the other ones disappeared because now we have the final nodes that we need to find. So again, some more hunting to do. If voila, we found final node. And yeah, you doesn't really matter what you click on. Um, what you cut, you cannot target farm. Uh, what bonuses we get now? What do we have? Defending a battle will reduce an additional 25 damage and we will receive 5% less orns. So you can work out, because we are using uh, arrows, we have the volley skill, so we don't actually have the ability to defend. Uh, unless someone can correct me whether volley 
does actually use the defending mechanic. That would be interesting. But anyway, we receive 5% less horns. Uh, that Amity is uh, pretty useless, unfortunately. Uh, but nevertheless, that whole entire hunt um, you will you will take it can take time to get uh, some nice amateurs. It's just luck. But what we did get out of it was Jesus, like ninety thousand orns, something like that. So let's go and buy adept. Now just be careful here because uh, battle master can can wear all types of gear. So if you were wearing uh, like a mage only or the mage only uh, item, you won't be able to wear it. Like a robe of wolves is quite a really nice, amazing item. Uh, tier 3. Adept cannot wear it. Skill set up. We lose a, we lose a skill slot, unfortunately. Uh, now, we're okay for now. Once we get to level 85, it's worth putting barrier 2 there, which will raise both our defense and resistance. So, I will just check how many materials I have uh, for a blacksmith. Uh, 10 stone, still need 15 extra stone. Uh, check for rubbish, uh, which spawns on the water. I don't, I don't see any rubbish here. It's like a barrel. Uh, unfortunately, that, that does drop stone sometimes. Now, what I forgot to do while I was in Athantia was actually check in at the waste stone, which is to the northeast up here. Top right. So we're going to go there. And then what we're going to do is farm uh, down Odin's Finger which is the path across uh, south of Athantia towards Avalon. I'm going to go down there. Uh, some nice tier 4 bosses which we should be able to take out. Uh, trolls being one of them. Mimic Kings are now in the game as well. So we can try and get those. And focus on yeah trying to find stone. Uh, and there we go, there's the Waygate. Now... Got a lick here, a lich here. Daily quest to kill two of these bad boys. You see it's resistant to dark and resistant to earth. So we may as well just go with volley. A second one just popped up right beside it, thankfully. So that's quite lucky. But we're going to manage to get another uh, daily quest completed there straight off the bat, which is really nice. Ancient boots and hood. You see that? Those are uh, mage equipment. Uh... Okay, but we get, you know, two and a half thousand orns there and a level, you know. This is why you want to do quests. Now, we've got an undead golem. A uh, very, very interesting character. Because this guy can drop our next weapon upgrade. Drops a bone crusher. Relatively easy to take down, actually, for us at this moment. Um, he didn't drop the bloody weapon. I don't believe it. Didn't even drop the fucking weapon. Oh, but not to worry. We got a, a Mimic King spawned. So Mimic King can only spawn on uh, Forest Biome. Um, wasn't in the game at the start, but now they've fixed that. So Mimic Kings can spawn. Now look at these rewards when we kill this guy. 4,000 orns, 800,000 XP, 164,000 gold. Also get the Mimic King head, bunch of random stuff. Now, yeah, we learned Barrier 2, so let's put that on. I am actually going to put that on above Stun Dart uh, for the moment. And what we're going to do is... We're going to equip the Mimic King head because we get extra 20% gold and an extra 3% orns. Now, that's one thing. We, we, we equip the Mimic King head. Our actual next goal would be to find a second Mimic King head and start upgrading that in the Blacksmith. Ignore the Gargoyle, because that will destroy us right now, I think. Because, yeah, the Mimic King head, we want to upgrade that, and actually we want to get that all the way to level 10 and then Master Forge it. This is thinking, you know, long-term in the, in the future will take some time to upgrade. Uh, but when you Master Forge, all the extra bonuses, the Orn bonus, the Gold bonus, will be at a Master Forged level. So regardless of what quality you find it, 
if it's broken or ornate, when you master forge it, the orn and gold quantity bonus will be the same, and it's huge. It's it's really huge. So ideally we find a second one and we start leveling that up. What would be amazing is if we found a quality version Mimic King head straight away. Definitely equip that and uh, start using that. But yeah, this tier four area, we're gonna start killing bosses here. See if we can get a nice weapon upgrade. See what we get. Again, didn't drop his weapon. I can't believe that. Unreal. Now the gargoyle is uh, is is stronger. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to take it down just yet. So I want to get at least to Avalon, the next town, so we can do kind of fast travel. If you see Drakes, uh, kill them. Can drop some better armor potentially. Ah, okay, but we don't want to, we don't want to replace it with our Mimic King helmet, unfortunately. And I have entered the Kingdom of Avalon, which has a blacksmith here. So we can check on our stuff that's upgrading for uh, Galar. Still need 15 minutes on that. There's a couple of shops here. So check the shops. Uh, see if there's any upgrades. There's amulet there. And whoa, we got some stone. Very nice. Buy that. Buy some elixirs. Why not? Uh, and then there's an arcanist here, which we can buy skills. Um, okay, so there's not really anything important here just now, but I recommend buying everything you can that is cheap anyway, uh, especially if you haven't uh, maxed out the skilled um, achievement yet. Get some skills there. Uh, herbalist, I'll come to that in a second. I just want to check the other shop and the inn. Uh, Okay, day leaf. Okay, and here's some explorer's waystone. So buy some of those, make your amity hunting a bit more easier. So here we have upgrade equipment, defeat flame, some more quests to do there. Another in here. Okay, now Avalon Herbalist. So in the Herbalist, you can make some potions like elixirs, some nostrum, stone cure. You can go through these at your own time. Uh, beast blood as well. Uh, can I make beast blood right now? No, I need to. I need a small empty bottle. Uh, beast blood is great because it actually makes more monsters spawn. Uh, it's very much like an occult candle. So you can find small empty bottles in shops sometimes. Keep your eye out for them. Buy them. Uh, but right now, I just want to show you something. Uh, elixir. There's a little trick here. So. There is in fact an achievement called Master Herbalist or, or Skill Herbalist essentially. And to complete this, you need to do 2000, uh, brew 2000 potions to complete the line. And you actually, you, you get a few thousand orns in the end. So here for the first one, you get 500 orns. Um, but the quickest way I found to do it is, is by making elixirs. So you can see elixirs you need uh, two small health potions and two small mana potions. So to complete the the entire uh, achievement line, you need two thousand potion. You need to create two thousand elixirs in total. So you need to buy uh, four thousand small health potions and four thousand small mana potions. Which uh, okay, we've got five million gold right now. So if you buy, you can only buy uh, 1,000 at a time, I think. But yeah, uh, 800,000 gold. Buy the, buy, buy small amount, buy the small mana potions. I'm not going to do everything uh, right now, but I just want to show you what to do. Because it's definitely worth your time doing if you're, if you're a bit bored. So... Back to the herbalist, back to elixir, and put this to 10, which is the max, unfortunately, hold to craft. And if you double click or triple click, you can kind of get through the continue screen and uh, hold, down, hold down on the third click. 
and basically get your timing right and you get into a rhythm and you can uh, craft these super fast and uh yeah if you've got like an extra 15 minutes you don't know what to do you can uh, probably sit down and and complete the the achievement line in one go uh very nice very very nice uh, to do that very nice gameplay uh skilled herbalist yes 5000 orange there smash that but anyway we're going to Go and grab the next way gate, which is in Sadun Desert, uh, which is in this eastern part of uh, Sadun Desert, which is nice. So there's a way gate just down here. Go grab that. Can actually enter Sadun. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth doing that at this time. Uh, oh, we found a landmark stone. So there's 5,000 orange in the achievement. And boom, I'm going to get another 10,000 orange straight away there. So yeah, it is worth doing doing all those. Now, I will tell you why it can be worthwhile going to Sadun, uh, because there is a bazaar there. And in the bazaar, I will show you actually, because it's worth showing. And basically you can buy, oh, golems, they drop stone, by the way. They can drop stone. Still hunting for stone. And didn't drop it. Okay, not very, not very nice. But, oh, there's a, there's a clickable stone item over there, so I'm gonna get that. Kill this Dark Widow for the daily quest. Get the Waygate. Now that lovely pyramid of Sadun is, uh, is in fact a dungeon. It's a mystic cave, which is one of the themed dungeons. So it's slightly different to... Uh, nice 10,000 horns. Uh, it's slightly different to the dungeon we did earlier, which is a normal dungeon. Um, but you can come to this later. I don't really recommend doing uh, it straight away. Uh, you can, feel free, actually. Uh, you do get extra orns for completing it. So, you know what? Let's just do it. Same as before, War Cry and Barrier 2 gives us defense up and uh, resistance up, and then we're just going to volley our way through. Now, the Mystic Cave type dungeon has scaled up enemies and they're all magic type enemies but they're all going to be scaled to your tier so you can see everything here is is tier four and the damage is going to be yeah quite high so worth showing you that um you are still gonna you still may get smashed especially if we are rocking around with the unleveled gear so I probably should have stuck to my original point, which was don't bother with this dungeon. Okay, never mind. Forget that happened. We're gonna go to Sadun. Pick up that stone along the way. Uh there's a there's a golem there. Uh I think we might be able to pick that stone up from the from the below here, but well three orc lords sitting in a fucking desert. Didn't get the stone drop there from the golem, unfortunately. Now be very wary when starting off killing orc lords because they have a skill called bloodlust which increases their attack by 50% and they can hit you really seriously hard. So there's 8 stone. What are we sitting at now? Uh, 20 stone. Still need 5 stone. Bloody hell. Right, I'm still going to go to Sadun and show you the bazaar. Let's see if we can try our luck with an orc lord. Uh, you see, Onslaught, already half of our health. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to flee this fight, actually. It's worth trying, for sure. Uh, remember the sleep dart tactic I explained earlier, put them to sleep, it can work. But uh, the Orc Lords do hit hard early on. Here we are, we've entered Sadun, and we've got the Bazaar over here. I'm going to show you straight away, because it's not just a shop, it's a... Uh, the shop of uh, extremely interesting items. Basically any, not anything, but a lot of random things can uh, spawn in here that we can buy. Uh, things that you might not normally find, for example, a Twilight Blade with 143 attack, <laughs> which is 46 attack more than ours. Now, uh, the reason this is so high is that this is actually a leveled weapon. Things you buy in here can be leveled up and I'm 100% sure that this weapon is going to be level. Look at that, level 5 already. Uh, so 
That is a very nice find. Indeed. Definitely equipping that. So there's an extra 40 attack. What else can we find in here? Uh, steady pendant, orthodox helmet. Oh, it's a lot of... Okay, this helmet is... Uh... Okay, those stats because the mimicking head bringing us down. Oh, some hide. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. There was an elven, elven sword there. I didn't see that. Well, I could have also bought that. It was probably... I'll tell you what we're going to buy. Some uh, Fomorian armor. Level 4. Nice, nice. Bit of defense. And what we're going to check out here, there's a bestiary, a normal shop, an inn, and a jeweler. Jewelry shop. So we can actually buy adornments. So these are kind of jewels which you can put in items. You see there's two little slots there. When you level things up, typically they will always have some slots you can adorn with. Uh, unfortunately, there's no nothing available for our tier there. Okay, remember we are still having a tier 3 pet, so let's check if there's anything... Ah, living hammer, living sword. I'm going to buy one of these guys. I think I still need to get rid of my current follower. So yeah, I need to release this fantastic hellhound. Get the gold, but half the gold back. And you can buy living hammer, living sword. This is just really consistent damage. Uh, it's not that much difference between them. One lowers an opponent's magic defense. Uh, the hammer may lower an opponent's defense so magic defense and attack defense so we want to take the hammer I'm just assuming that's going to be more consistent damage and, and higher damage uh, basically higher, higher level higher tier followers will have the output, higher output potential in terms of damage so right so what I'm going to do now, we, we can't really go beyond here. This is a tier 5 area. So as I said, really, we're going to walk up and down Odin's Finger now. Uh, all the way up to Great Athantia. Hunting out Mimic Kings and other tier 4 bosses. Um, and Stone. Uh, that's basically what we're going to do. So walk all the way to Athantia. Pick up Stone. Kill bosses. I still need five stone for the for my the next quest. So oh there's some stone right there. That might take us to 25, which would be awesome. And it kind of ties in nicely with our uh, items in the blacksmith as well. They needed about they probably need about five more minutes for getting upgraded to level one as well. So how much do we get here? Boom! 10 stone, baby. We're good. And actually, you will get a notification when uh, our items are upgraded. So let's let's uh let's actually farm some some tier 4 bosses. That sounds uh that sounds fun. Go find some. I'm going to leave the uh, the orc lords alone <laughs> for the moment. So I'm just going to show you where I'm going here. I'm just going to north of Avalon, then heading west through the Woven Forest. And there's a way gate here. And I'm actually going to farm bosses in this area here. Make sure we get the way gate first in case we die. But there's a undead golem. And now, of course, with our lovely uh, level 5 weapon, we can dish out some damage. Now... Unfortunately, the magic hammer's damage is getting resisted, cut in half. Uh, we got the bone crusher, which wa was going to be our kind of next uh, planned weapon, but okay, get the way gate. Uh, to be fair, if we find a quality bone crusher, it will likely it has the potential to be a much higher attack than what we're wearing. Now. I reckon here's a good place to farm because the bosses can spawn basically that's the, the the highest they can spawn. You can also spawn down there, but very regularly you get the there's only one boss that can spawn in this zone. 
Uh, but it's very, very close, closely knit. So it's actually a very nice farming area. And even more so because we have woodland, we have forest biome, and that means that the Mimic King can spawn. And of course, as I said, Mimic King has extra bonus rewards. We also have Boulder here. Uh, we don't have that much Earthstone just yet. Take down this troll again. Get some hide and wood, level up. Orc Lord. Okay, we're going to try our luck with or Mr. Orc Lord. Get Warcry up. Ooh, big damage. Okay, I cast Bloodlust. Okay, lucky, lucky. <laughs> yeah, they are dangerous, uh, Orc Lords, especially when they use Bloodlust, so just be careful. Um, it does often rain in this every couple of hours, actually, so when it rains, we have the chance for these cores, and they're very, very productive as well. 400 Orns there, definitely worth killing. Now, where is this boss spawn? Okay, it's way up there. Unfortunately, we also have Camazots, which is the another tier 4 forest biome boss spawn as well. Could easily have been Mimic King. Camazots probably a bit harder to kill, actually, especially because it is resistant to dark damage and earth damage, it seems. So, yeah, take your time, be careful. Make sure you have enough health potions to relieve ourselves. Uh, yeah, for this, actually, for farming bosses, you want to buy buy a few more large health potions. For sure. <laughs> we can still take him down, though. So being adept, we actually get more juice out of our potions. And unfortunately, that was my last large health potion. I do have a super health potion down there. I'm trying to save that for a really big emergency. In the meantime, our magic hammer is uh, tapping away. Uh, please kill it for us. No? There we go. Okay, Batwing Bow is the weapon it drops. I think that is a thief-only weapon, which means we can actually still wear it. Kill a couple of these quest mobs. But you can see this is, only has 77 attack on it. And uh, the dexterity and the foresight is, is really not worth anything at the moment. Dismantle that for the cave stone. I had a quest for that earlier somewhere. Need to go hand that back in. Another troll. Bites the dust. Do, do, do. Another troll bites the dust. Do, do, do. Another troll. Another troll. Another troll bites the dust. Level 90. Okay. Ooh, Camazots. I'm not gonna, not gonna kill Camazots. So what I'm instead gonna do Fire out a little party trick, disband party. Make a new one. And uh, respawn the boss. Let's see what we get. Another troll. Another troll. Not many Mimic Kings here. Where are they all the Mimic Kings at? Another troll back to dust. Mr. Orc Lord. I'm going to show you a setting I like to have on. Uh, options. Over heal. Where is it? Over heal here. Allow auto heal to use more potions I needed. Basically, what I'm doing with every fight between these boss fights, uh, I long tap the potion button down here, and that uh, takes us to max health. And that just sets us up for the next fight. And it uses your smallest potion first, so that's why I buy. That's why you want to buy lots of small uh, health potions at the start uh, before you go out as well. 
You want to be max health before fights, especially when you're fighting another troll. Oh, we got one. We got Mimic King. Here we go. So good. One shot, Adamantine Staff. Tier 5 item, by the way. Gold XP. Oh, so juicy. So, I got about 70, like 70% 70 of this next level. Like, well, I got a lot of experience. If I was using an experience uh, potion, would have got two levels out of that kill. Now, oh, Mr. Orc Lord. And you know what? For the purpose of this video, I'm, I am going to use an experience potion, which doubles our experience from any monster killed. If you want to get more experience potions easy, I recommend you join a kingdom. It's quite a few kingdoms now. And click and just really start raiding. Try and do as much damage to Draken and Fomor as possible. All the raids that they have up. Uh, because they all drop experience pots. They also drop like uh, attack tonics, magic tonics, uh, dowsing rods as well from Fomor onwards. So that's going to be our best uh, source of experience potions. And then, you know, anytime you're farming, you definitely want to pop all your boosters, uh, gold coin, silver coin, experience potion. Um, the coins especially, they, you can see they drop from pretty much every boss except uh, this guy. Um, so, and you can see I'm focusing really on world bosses way over um, monsters. Ah, okay, there's a Zerk there. Probably not going to be able to kill that. I'm really focusing on world bosses and quest monsters, anything we need to kill for quests. Now this Berserk, um, very, very difficult. So I'm actually going to do the party trick. Uh, most likely going to die to that Bone Crusher. Um, yeah, I okay. Free. <laughs> I, I could have attempted it. I could have attempted it. But we got another troll to kill. Keep killing trolls and they might drop a quality trolls charm, which is not poor or broken or, or normal. We've got the notification as well that our items have finished upgrading. So now we can actually move on with the quest line. So that's the Camazots. I don't want to kill that. So I'm going to go back to our origin town, build a blacksmith to click on Mr. Gofan and every time you want to build something. I need to place it. Can I place this thing, please? There we go. Carl's blacksmith. Excellent. All right. Uh, oh yeah, we, have to, we actually have to go to the blacksmith and get the stuff out. That's been upgrading. Now, now the quest is complete. Exit here. Complete this quickly. And talk to Seeker Mara, who is in the resting place, as it tells you here, in the top right of your screen. Resting place is just northwest of Loton. Uh, over here. Kill this little goblin lord on the way. Yeah, now we're now we're too showing these guys. Lucky silver coin. Okay, we all, there is also the achievement line for upgrading things in the blacksmith. I I really don't feel like it's worth time investing time into that, as similar to the herbalist making potions, because it's very slow to put things in the blacksmith compared to uh making like ten elixirs every second. It's just it's you will do it over time, and the Orns are really not that great for it as well. The resting place is actually normally bouncing. There's normally a few loads of players here, uh, such as this tier 10 fellow <laughs> punch choke. Uh, okay, talk to Seeker Mara. And now we got to kill these monsters. Fallen Archmage, Fallen Knight, Fallen Witch. So these are tier three. And a couple of things we can do. Basically from Lithran Woods all the way down onwards is going to be our best chance of spotting these. You can also spot them in a normal dungeon 
if your cooldown is on. Uh, but fairly rare mobs. Some stone there. Always pick up stone, by the way. Always pick up stone. I'm going to kill this Lord of Wolves. Nothing there. Oh, there's a Fallen Witch right there. Excellent. What I was going to say is uh, the part, remember the party trick. Uh, disband, invite. That Remember that respawns mobs. So as long as you're in a zone where the mobs can spawn, that is going to be a very nice way to complete this quest. Fallen Mage Staffs. So that's one out of three. Another daily quest to kill these Grey Wolf men, so you may as well do that. And tier three is, is a nice place to farm. Still, if you're... If you if you are struggling with the tier four bosses at this point, farming this demon knight and the tier three bosses is still very very viable, very fine. Allows you to pick up a nice weapon from this guy, and this guy remember drops gauntlet keys as well. Uh, oh, I mean look at that legendary demonic blade. If you find that, if you find like a legendary or yeah, one hundred thirteen attack. Uh, You know, if you if you again, if you have Whetstones at this point, that is going to be a very nice attack, and that is definitely going to allow you to be killing tier four bosses. Lizard Lord, a legend of the old quest line, the old Orna quest line. You had to kill a Lizard Lord, which was, if you didn't have any water nearby, was very very hard to find. Let's uh, see what we can get get for us. Both scales. So yeah, tier three weapon, um, very. Again, it's another weapon choice. If you get a quality drop, can be usable. So now the hunt continues for uh, fallen knight and fallen archmage, and this is our fifth dark widow of the day. Allows us to complete another daily quest. Very nice indeed. Undead golem still worth killing. You get a lucky drop for the Bone Crusher. Give me a nice upgrade. I mean, all tier four bosses are worth killing at this point because uh, farming. Yeah, we are still farming, so nothing really good there. Oh, Mimic King. That's what we're like. That's what we want to see. Uh, okay, nothing juicy here. Countsuit is a solid uh, helm, but no items. But we got really nice. Uh, rewards uh level 98 uh okay don't need to so as we kill another under golem really any of these tier 4 areas is nice to farm so you know here we're next to a town next to a way gate um the other place we're doing there it's not too bad uh, i guess here at this point uh when you cross this line here between these two barriers, there's there's one boss that can spawn on that side. Uh, here, I think there's two bosses that can spawn in this area. So anywhere from like here to the other side of the bridge, there can be two bosses spawned. And obviously, basically you want to farm anywhere that a Mimic King can spawn. So anywhere next to some, some woodland. Uh, but it seems like there's only... One boss here. Maybe they changed that since I was farming this on my main character last week. But yeah, in terms of farming these tier four bosses, anywhere that a mimic king can spawn, you want to you want to farm there basically because uh, it gives very high rewards. It's literally a one shot, and uh, you can get some nice things dropping from it. Now another troll. Still no quality troll charm though. Okay. So we're nearing the end of the scope of this video. A uh, very long walkthrough, but hopefully it gives you guys an idea of uh, getting started in Aetheric as a melee character, whether that's warrior or thief. The lines are very similar. And the story quest is should be used as a, as a guide of what you want to do 
next. I mean, you can always farm bosses uh, just to level and ignore the story quest. But some things, they take time. And you, I, I do recommend trying to keep on top of the story quest uh, as much as you can. And, okay, we got a Gargoyle. Let's, let's see if we can take down Carmen's Gargoyle. This is probably the hardest tier 4 boss because we can get petrified. And we don't really have any way of dealing with petrification at this point in the game. And there we go. You can't move when you're petrified. So you can only really heal. And I forgot to buy large health potions last time I was in a town. Uh, but Carmen's Gargoyle can drop Gauntlet Keys, so it's very good farming. Okay, I have to... Let's use a super health potion. What the hell? Nice. Didn't have to use it. <laughs> Didn't get the Gauntlet Key drop either, but uh, there it is. It's actually snowing in this area. You can find Yeti in this area, which drops a Yeti coat, which is the best armor at tier 4. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying before, killing that Carmen's Gargoyle, really what we've done, we've... I'm just going to show you my playtime. I know this is almost a two-hour long video, but my actual playtime on this character is... Uh, almost four hours. So basically half the time I've been recording uh, while playing. Now, really what we're going to do, goal was to get you to tier five, which is level 100. Um, so we're almost there. A couple more boss kills and we'll be there. Um, to be this far in the story quest line, you know, tier three, we're, we're doing pretty well, almost tier four. Be sure to check out Conk's uh, main quest line guide. It's uh, really solid. Tells us, you know, it's, it was based on Orna, but the there's very minor changes for Aetheric. And um, all, all the kill quests, you will have to do them at some point. So it kind of tells you where, where to find. In terms of monsters, they can always spawn in their tier zone. So, and the tier below, of course. Uh, but Again, I, I do recommend joining a kingdom, uh, tapping the raids. You will have to wait 24 hours before you're allowed to raid. Um, but we get occult candles, which causes more mobs to spawn, which means it's much easier to kill uh, or find the right type of enemies we want. Remember our little party trick uh, to get new monsters to spawn as well. This is how I actually used... This is the method I used to farm Baylor Guardians, uh, 25 Baylor Guardians, uh, before I got nerfed to five Baylor Guardians because no one else could actually... Uh, well, a lot of people couldn't really do it. And it, to be fair, if you're, if you're playing in a normal way, it's very hard to kill 25 Baylor Guardians. Anyway, I really hope you found this video useful. It was very much in detail. I will be doing like a, a, a much faster video, which basically going to be like a summary of where to go, uh, tier by tier. Um, but this... Walk through, are we tier five yet? No, we're not tier five, but okay, we're gonna reach tier five and I'm gonna give like a, an outline of my recommended next plays. Okay, let's kill this undead golem. And this should take us to level 100, which is tier five. A very nice, uh, a very nice point to reach in Orna or Hero of Aetheric for sure. Not quite halfway through the game. I can guarantee you that. There we go, level 100, we unlocked uh, West Sadun and Meropis. Very nice areas. Now, I'll give you another actually tip for quest mobs. And those are these enchanted skulls that you get from killing the undead golem. You can read the description. They basically cause more monsters to spawn. Do, 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 do. So you can see like this, and let's just force spawn server. Uh, okay, there doesn't seem to be that many more mobs spawned, but trust trust me, it does it does work. Maybe not so good here. It's, there's hardly any area for mobs to spawn. It's a very thin uh, piece of map. But if we go to uh, Sadun here, 
It's the desert. I'm just going to put auto travel to Sadun. Now there is another uh, way gate just right there. And there's another dungeon there. That's a normal dungeon. And, you know, definitely recommend doing normal dungeons whenever you can. Roughly six hours every cooldown for the moment. Can do boss dungeons as well. Um, but you can quite easily find monsters uh, in dungeons that you need as well. wonder if my internet is actually down, and that's the reason why no monsters are spawning. It was. My internet was down. Uh, should be back up in just a moment. This is a Sadoon Desert with zero mobs on it. Definitely something wrong. Okay, sorry about that. I have sorted my internet issues there. We got Fallen Knight in Sadun Desert. Just spawned right next to us. Oh, and I got the internet back. And you may have seen a nice shiny object over here next to the tomb. This is a Shrine of Wisdom. This is going to double experience gained as well. Um, you can buy them in the in the rune shop. Uh, 70, 70 pence, 99 cents, whatever. Um, but you can, obviously there, as I just proved, you can find them in the world as well. And the shrines you find can stack on top of each other. You can get more, you can get hours of uh, double experience and um, luck shrines, double orns as well. So this, yeah, I really expected there to be more mobs here when I'm wearing these enchanted skulls. Uh, I don't know what's up. Um, it could it could very well be my my internet kind of playing up. Um, but yeah, normally you can use the enchanted skulls to increase monster spawns. Uh, the quality doesn't matter. Broken, famed, ornate, it's all the same. And okay, we got some more mobs spawning here, so. Yeah, those are very good for completing daily quests. Any kind of quests that require you to find monsters rather than bosses, uh, the enchanted skulls are very worth having. Team up enchanted skulls with a cult candle, beast blood, uh, torch. Always have a torch on. It does increase monster spawns. Um, and you have a very... Uh, going to be smashing quests. As you can see, we have done already... Uh, 29 quests in just a few hours playtime so the next quest seeker is definitely a really nice achievement line to do early on i'm making my way over to these uh, the east dunes uh, the west dunes sorry of sadun 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 dunes remember there's a way gate there another dungeon there and got a very nice okay get the way gate and then this is a tier 5 area, uh, level 100 plus. Now, this death worm is going to be actually a target for our next weapon upgrade. Uh, relatively easy to kill, only 1500 HP. And drops, this, drops a sandstorm weapon. Uh, okay, we might not get the kill here. Uh, maybe we will. Drops sandstorm there. which is probably your next target in terms of a weapon. Especially if you are Earth and Legion, by the way, if you pick the Earth faction. When you do damage of your own faction, you get a 25% damage bonus. And so for Sandstorm, it's already it's always Earthen. It's like the Twilight Blade, which is always dark. Get a quality one of these, level it up a little bit. And when you use Volley, it will do Earthen damage. So you can see we're still a little bit weak for, for Tier 5 at the moment. Um, this is the this is the dungeon, by the way, and that other pyramid is a, an arena. So, in terms of this walkthrough, we're going to end it there. Um, what I'm going to suggest is continue with the story quest line uh, as much as you can. And then, in terms of classes for the attack line, you're going to make a choice now at tier 5. If you want to go pure attack, we go majestic into Blade Master, and then into Magistrate at Tier 7. However, you have the option at Tier 5 to go Dragoon. And actually, Dragoon, if you're going to farm really hard, 
you get the skill called Dragoon, Dragon's Vengeance, which is a very nice uh, bombing skill. Dragon's Vengeance 2 as well. Um, Dragoon also leads into Blade Master. Um, but Dragoon is more of a pet class, which enters the Dragon Knight at tier 7. So at tier 7, you get a kind of split in classes. Now, we're, we're going to ignore Dragon Knight and continue with the Magistrate line. And then if you want to go pure warrior, you're going to go Atlas Vanguard, tier 8. And then at tier 9, you're going to go Titan Guard. And then tier 10, you want to go Gilgamesh. Also at tier 8, we can switch or we can choose to go with Thief again. And that is Arcanic. And then into the tier 9, Nyx. And finally, tier 10, uh, Realm Shifter. Now, I do have other videos that kind of go into detail of what the end game is like in Orna, and it's going to be very similar in terms of Aetheric. Um, really, the playstyle is quite similar up until up until tier eight. Really, it's very it's the same. Um, once you get once you finish Magistrate, because Magistrate is still wearing our uh, warrior and armor and thief gear. Um, Got to decide what you want to do after that. Now, in terms of actually farming and getting there. So you still, we're still kind of struggling at this point to kill tier five mobs. So I do recommend farming tier four for a while, trying to get a nice weapon. As soon as you're going offline, stick all your gear in a blacksmith. Um, getting it above, you want to level it up. You want to try and find better armor now. That, that That's something we're missing. Um, weapon is quite nice. We got lucky with the weapon. But stick everything in in the in the blacksmith. Yeah, you know I'm still wearing tier two armor now, and now we are tier five. So you want to try and focus on that. Kill the drakes. Drake's quite good. Drake Drake armor, uh, Fomorians and stuff. Uh, you'll notice most bosses don't actually drop armor. They just they just, they only drop weapons or accessories. Uh, interestingly enough, so yeah, farm over here tier four. Kill mimic kings. Then when you're strong enough to regular kill regularly kill tier five bosses, uh, coming to the Sadun Dunes area is a very nice place to farm. I'm gonna look for Hurricane Arc from Griffin, Sandstorm, quality weapons there, tier five. And Meropis as well as a tier five area. You see it's very large though, and there's no um there's no actually no way gate there. So um mm, you you may you may want to farm there for quests. Uh, lots of monsters spawn there. Uh, and really after tier five you'll open the, the mountains of Jotunheim, this area here above Lithrin, tier six area. And that's really where you're gonna spend a lot of time farming there, bosses there as well. So that's the kind of the next steps. But in terms of this walkthrough, this I know it's a long detailed walkthrough. I hope it actually helps some of you um to see me actually playing the game new character warrior class up to up to tier five. Um just remember try and keep up with your story quests. Remember the tricks we showed you. And yeah, two hour video. If you watch the entire thing and I hope you found it useful uh, let me know in the comments. We'd really really uh, like to know and also want to thank all the Arisen Orna Legends for supporting me on Patreon, on Twitch and uh, on the Orna Legends Discord as well big shout out to the mods on Orna Legends doing a great job with Amity Hunting I wonder if that will ever come into Aetheric but if you enjoyed the video if you found it useful let me know uh, you know smash the like button if, if you liked it very in depth there will be a much shorter summary video Kind of looking at farming areas only. Uh, that will come relatively soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Shabash, and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.